Hi, my name is Zach Dowell. Uh, I conducted my thesis research on the solar heating of bioreactors. Uh, what I have over here are two bioreactors. One is electrically heated and one is heated through a solar thermal panel. So what I'm going to do now is go through my daily process of uh, feeding the digester and then I'm going to show you how I take methane readings. So what I've done here is I have a bucket of slurry here that's composed of uh, food waste and manure, a half and half mixture. So I'm just going to top this off with some water here. And then I use a drill with a paddle bit and it uh, does a pretty good job of mixing this stuff. On most days I would be feeding both machines um, because the experiment's over and I'm just doing this uh, to kind of show people the routine. I'm just going to do this one side. This is the solar bioreactor here. So the first step is to cut off the uh, methane pipe. So I'm cutting that off there. And then I'm going to open up my effluent pipe right here. And as I open this, you're going to see a little bit trickle out just because of the pressure within this tank. There we are. So I'm going to put my bucket down here to capture that slurry that comes out. And as I give this feeding, you're going to notice that the same amount of volume that I put in is going to come out and it's going to enter that bucket down below. So what we have here uh, is uh, called digestate after it's dried. Um, this is an effluent which is relatively odorless. Uh, it's been fully processed um, and when dried um, it's known to be a super high grade fertilizer. So what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to close these valves back now that the feeding has taken place and I'm going to take a methane reading. So this is kind of my procedure every day. Uh, generally I come out and I do the feeding and then right after I take a methane reading. So what I have here is called a GEM 2000 unit. It's most commonly used by landfills to measure the methane content of landfill gas. Of course, what I have here um, is also methane, so it works just fine for my purposes. So right now you can hear it priming. So what I do is I cut off the main flow, which goes over to my storage barrels, and uh, that's going to give the pressure uh, to this little nipple right here that has a quarter inch hose. I'm going to stick that hose on there. I'm going to open this up. And then what this does is it has a pump in it, and you're going to hear it draw a sample here. And we're going to look at our methane content. Generally it takes just a few seconds for it to suck the air out of the tube before the methane gets there. And then as, as you can see the CH4 located at the top um, is our methane. It's looking like things are exactly what they have been for the last several weeks. Right in the mid-50s range is what I've been uh, receiving from both digesters. 54.5. Alright, what I have here is a 40 gallon electric hot water heater. Uh, it's um, turned up to a temperature of 125 degrees. Down below, uh, what you cannot see right now actually because it's covered and insulated, is a circulation pump. Um, it's a TACO 006. It draws about 50 watts. Uh, my discovery has been that the hot water heater draws about 1,000 watts. So the energy inputs to the electrical system were actually more than I thought that they would be. They were over $13 a month. Um, so, you know, considering solar as an alternative to using this energy source um, is it, really a good option. So, uh, over to my right, I have the gas collection barrels. Um, these barrels uh, both receive methane from the biodigesters. Uh, they're filled with water. As they receive the gas, the barrels fill and rise. Um, my recording technique involves taking a tape measure and I measure the inches of rise um, and then I have a formula where I'm able to determine the volume uh, that's uh, captured within each barrel each day. So uh, after, basically after I've taken my recording, what I do is I cut this valve here and then I press down on this and then uh, the, the gas flows out and into these air mattresses over to my right, which you can see are nearly full. Uh, when I fill this thing up, it gives me about six inches of water column. So that's exactly what I need to create proper pressure for burning. So what I have here is a four by eight solar thermal flat plate collector. Uh, this was a new collector um, and its performance uh, has been excellent. Um, my discovery has been that its, per its performance is 
very close to that of a pump system. So what's going on here is this panel is located lower than my bioreactor and that enables this panel to perform the uh, process of thermosiphoning where hot water rises up and through a heat exchanger within the bioreactor for heating. Um, 